Hilda, thank you so much for joining us here in Berlin at Super Return International. Thank you for having me. It's great being here. Good. Um, you're here to talk a bit about how technology can be positioned as a value creator enabler. Tell me about that and what you're seeing in the industry in those terms. So, uh, for, uh, for us, the digital transformation and tech enablement was a very core part of our philosophy. We're a relatively new firm. We were set up less than two years ago and we founded the firm with the belief that technology being driven into the economy, not just being invested in silos is very important. Um, so we've developed the entire process of investment around that and it has been extremely effective. I don't think that there's a secret, especially after COVID. I think before COVID you needed a lot of convincing. I think after COVID that's been easier where everybody knows that it's uh, crucial and uh, a great value generator. Tell me about those reservations. What are you still seeing in terms of what this industry is really doing in terms of adoption and adapting with, in terms of technology? So I think the biggest thing, the reservations typically come from, they used to come from a lack of uh, belief in the urgency or the importance or the re relative contribution of technology in expenditure to returns. I think that's a little bit behind us, but you still have reservations on expenditure broadly. Technology is expensive, it's not a cheap undertaking. And unfortunately, technological investments also ent uh, entail a lot of mistakes, which is where your process and your networks and your partners matter very much. I think what you still see in the private equity industry, not everywhere, but definitely you do see it, and I was discussing with some of my uh, co-panelists earlier who are actually core technology within their firms is that the investment side, which is where I come from, the uh, fund managers, the investment professionals, will always be in a hurry to see, look at the return and will not necessarily look at the defensive side or the risk aversion side or the sustainability aspect of um, technology. You talk there about the acceleration of the adoption because of the pandemic and I guess with that acceleration comes some pitfalls. How do you sort the wheat from the chaff if you like when there is a, surge, a surging sort of adoption of something like that? So I think that what happened with that was that everybody sort of rushed to go online in some form or another especially I think consumer businesses and from a from a uh, if you know short-term perspective that was effective. I think there are ways to get to uh, technological enablement that are driven by need and urgency, but ultimately you have to go back and structure that a little bit better, which is what we see when we diligence companies is that you have this something called uh, tech, uh, technical, technological debt, which is a function of people investing in systems without thinking through the you know, holistic system architecture, the scalability, the how different systems speak to each other and what happens is things are working on the front end but at the back you don't have a good aggregation of data you don't have data integrity you don't have uh, you have to you know have systems speak to each other through manual interfaces and those things have to be sorted when you do tech dd on businesses which we have now made a core part of our due diligence in our investment processes you will uncover those um, elements so tech can't just be a layer on the top, it's got to go deep. That's um, absolutely right. I think that's exactly right. If you look at tech as a you know, one of the 10 things you have to do as a task, you're never going to get there. It has to be central to your strategy. It has to be a boardroom discussion. It has to be a company scorecard KPI and it has to be tied to incentives. Um, we invest in traditional businesses. So sometimes the, the leadership team is not necessarily all tech uh, savvy. But when you put enough KPIs and pressure on, say, the CEO, he or she will bring his uh, um, or her tech team to, into the executive committee, into decision makers, because they know that the overall firm um, will be judged on that as well. Do you think you need different teams going forward? I mean, we've talked a lot about diversity at conferences like this. Absolutely. But presumably, you need a ta the talent in your company that's, that's different to what you've had before, if tech's going to be at the heart as well. Yeah, look, I think you definitely need to have tech-savvy managers. I think you also need... So there are some functional expertise that are not necessarily... You need the tech functional expertise, but the other functional or industry expertise that you need that may or may not have had that tech exposure, but good managers across the board in any field, in any function, stay up to date 
with technology in their field and know how to get the right solutions. They may not be uh, people who have been at a startup or done technology, but through their career, they would have adopted more and more technology because good managers are always uh, at the forefront of what will improve their businesses or their industries or their functions. What do you expect to be having the most conversations about this week? Because there's 4,000 members of your industry here in Berlin. It's a lot of people to have conversations with. What do you hope to take away? So I hope to learn more about what other people are doing in their businesses, how they're adding value, how they're making a uh, businesses succeed and growth and, and grow and accelerate. I would like to learn more about how to navigate challenges. Um, we're in a bit of a unique position in the Arabian Gulf where this whole recession talk and uh, slowdown is less uh, of an issue. Just We've had obviously a contraction in GDP growth, but we're still growing about three and a half or four percent because of the structural is uh, issues with oil supply and the fact that we're oil economy. So we're, we're having a good year. We're considered the region least likely to experience recession. Having said that, we live in a global world. There are, you know, there is war, there is inflation, there are recession uh, risks around. So learning and listening from people about how they're navigating, how they, how they plan to, um, you know, treat their uh, companies, their people, how they're helping and supporting would be interesting, I think. Well, it's great to have you here sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you so much. Thank for you for having me. me. Thanks.